Well, I want to continue with the Salmon series, Breaking Curses. And it's so good to know that it is really transforming lives. And I'm so glad that God allowed us to learn about curses so that our lives may be changed. Amen. How many feel like this series is really transforming your life? I mean, your life is changing. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've been looking at the subtopic triggers uh, of curses. And we began by looking at negative words as triggers of curses. And then we looked at dishonoring parents as another trigger for curses. And today I want to give you number three, which is also very important for us to consider as a trigger of curses. Are you ready for number three? So number three is propagating false doctrine. Propagating false doctrine is another trigger for curses. It is unfathomable now, as it was then, that more than 900 Americans, members of a San Francisco-based religious group called the People's Temple, died after drinking cool aid or poison at the urging of their leader. Their leader was called Jim Jones, and they were in a jungle somewhere in South America, and he told them to drink poison. And they followed him, drank it, and died. Photographs taken after the carnage document the sheer enormity of the event. The bodies of hundreds of people, including children, lying face down on the ground. At least 235 members of a millennium sect including dozens of children, died by mass suicide in Uganda. Expecting the end of the world, followers of the movement for the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God locked themselves in the church. And after several hours of chanting and singing, they set the church on fire, and all of them died in the inferno. Here at home, we have the Kanitha Wangai, or the Church of God. This church has a strange doctrine. Governed by their creed, they are stubbornly utopian. Sect members do not believe in modern science and even education. They prefer engaging in feverish prayers and refuse to take members of their families to hospital for treatment, even when they are confronted with serious illness. The majority of the followers live in squalid conditions and their children don't go past class eight. Immediately they finish with class eight that becomes the end of their journey as far as education is concerned. Then we had the potassium permanganate saga. Then we had the Mwende scandal. The stage managed prophecies and miracles by self proclaimed prophets who would wink gullible believers who flock their churches on a weekly basis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing all these stories to show you that we have false doctrine in our world today and we have false prophets pro pro propagating these doctrines and leading many astray. What is doctrine? 
Doctrine is a set of ideas or beliefs that are taught or believed to be true. I'll say that again. Doctrine is a set of ideas or beliefs that are taught or believed to be true. Biblical doctrine refers to teachings, tenets, and principles that align with the revealed word of God, which is the Bible. Therefore, if we talk about false doctrine, what do we mean? False doctrine simply means any idea that adds to, takes away from, contradicts, or nullifies the truth outlined in God's word. I'll say that again. False doctrine is any idea that adds to or takes away from or contradicts or nullifies the truth outlined in God's word. In other words, false doctrine opposes fundamental biblical truth. Examples of false doctrine that we have in our world today, number one, is the idea that there are many ways to get to God. This philosophy has become popular under the guise of tolerance. It claims that since God is love, he will accept any religious effort as long as the practitioner is sincere. Such a notion flies in the face of the entire Bible and effectively eliminates any need for Jesus to take on flesh and be crucified for us. Have you heard somebody say that if you're going to Mombasa, you can either fly or you can use the road and it will still get you to Mombasa. And they use the same, same analogy to mean that there are many ways that can take you to God. It's a false and strange doctrine. Jesus himself said in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to go to the Father, you have to go through Jesus Christ. Another false doctrine that we have is easy believism. Easy believism. This teaching presents grace without responsibility. It removes Bible-based responsibilities to respond to God in holiness. At some point, it really stretches grace and makes grace a license to sin. Have you had people say that when you get saved and you are covered with the grace of God, you don't have to do anything because the grace of God covers you. You don't have to struggle uh, to pray or to read the Bible. You don't have to engage in anything. The grace of God just covers you. And so such people sit in church, they don't do nothing, they don't pray, they don't fast, they don't serve, they don't work out their salvation with fear and trembling, and their excuse is the grace of God covers me. So they can do anything they want to do, and they keep on saying the grace of God covers me. They want to sin, and you should not address their sin, because they say the grace of God covers me. When you confront them, they say you are judgmental. They say you are judging. Then they even quote to you, they quote for you the scripture that says, judge that you may not be judged. All right? They think you don't have the love of God when you try to correct them because they have really stretched the message of the cross, you know, to mean that you are not supposed to do anything because the grace of God has done everything you know for you which is not true because there are scriptures that command that we should do something isn't it work out your, your salvation with fear and trembling 
Faith has works. There are things that God expects you to do. Jesus himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, you can't stretch grace to a point where it absorbs you as a child of God from responsibility. Because when you do that, then that is a wrong teaching. It's a false doctrine. Proponents of this doctrine produce very weak Christians. And Paul has had to deal with this thinking in Romans chapter 6, from verse 1 to 4. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Then he answers and he says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you know, do you not know rather, that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So after you get born again, you can just sit there and claim grace. There are things you have to do. You have to pray. Amen. You have to fast. Amen. You have to come to church. You can't just sit in your house and say, the grace for the service has covered me. It's a lie. Tell your neighbor, it's a lie. Yeah. And you have to fight. You have to fight for your salvation. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes, you have to fight temptation. Temptation will look for you. Sometimes you don't look for temptation. It looks for you. So you have to fight. You have to resist it. In fact, the Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Easy, believism is another false doctrine. And there's another also false doctrine which is being propagated and people are buying into it. And that is there is no need to tithe because it is an Old Testament practice. I saw another man of God. I don't know if he's a true man of God. He started a church and he was advertising his church on Facebook. And he had put this statement after putting the details, the location and everything. He wrote on that flyer that, and we do not collect tithes and offerings. I, I laughed. Now, it sounds so nice. It even looks like it's appealing and enticing to the masses. And you will think that a lot of people will go to that particular church. But as I'm telling you right now, the church never picked up. Because it's, it's a lie. Why are you not saying it's a lie? It's a lie. It's not truth. It's trying to entice the masses. You know, but the Bible recommends that we tithe. The Bible recommends that we give because it is through giving and tithing that we get blessed. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, don't join that church. <laughs> if, even if I was not born again, I would not go to that church because I understand principles. Tithing, ladies and gentlemen, was established before the law. That's according to Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. Abraham tithed even before the law was instituted. Then tithing was regularized by the law in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 to 32, and Numbers chapter 18, verse 25 to 28. Get time and read. And then it was validated by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23. Where Jesus is telling the Pharisees, as much as you're tithing and whatever, don't neglect other things like mercy. Don't, don't neglect them. But he never abolished tithing. Talk to me, somebody. So if somebody tells you that tithing is an Old Testament thing, just tell them, go and read your Bible, Father. Because they don't understand. You understand what I'm talking about. Then there is another... Are we together? I'm still building my message. Another false doctrine being propagated in our world today, and that doctrine says this, that there is no hell. There is nothing like hell. Last week I was watching a documentary of a preacher who was one of the greatest preachers in America, anointed man of God. He was a prolific speaker, 
a powerful singer. I mean, he, he could grab the microphone and you feel the anointing. And you're not even in the auditorium. You're just watching through the TV and you could feel it. Prolific speaker, very anointed singer. And he had a mega church. And he was so anointed that his church was multiracial. It had blacks, browns, whites. I mean, all colors were in his church. He was a mighty, mighty man of God. Most of these preachers that you see right now on the cutting edge, they, they have preached in his conferences. In fact, he's, 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 he's the preacher that thrusted T.D. Jakes to the limelight. Now, this preacher succumbed to a very wrong teaching. It's called the gospel of inclusion, which says that everybody is born again. When Jesus died and he says it's finished, it's finished. <laughs> so, because it is finished, there is nothing like hell. Because Jesus has finished everything. Yeah. So we are all born again. Whether, it doesn't matter how you pray. Jesus finished everything. And so there is nothing like hell. How can Jesus die on the cross and say it's finished? Then God still has hell to take people. And that is how his ministry went down. He lost everything. In fact, there's a movie which has come out. It's called Come Sunday. You can watch it. All right? And, and, and it shows that through false doctrine, he was able to really, really confuse believers because of the influence that he had. You see, the Bible describes hell so many times. And it describes hell as a place of eternal torment, the destination for every unregenerate soul. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15, the Bible says, and anyone, somebody say anyone. anyone. Say again, anyone. anyone. That means it includes pastors. It includes bishops. It includes prophets. It includes husbands, wives, children. You're not talking to me. <laughs> Businessmen and businesswomen, teachers, hustlers. It includes everybody, anyone not found, written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Hell is real. Even if people say it's not real, it is real. And if your name is not there, that is your destination. Ask your neighbor, even before I just continue preaching, ask them, are you born again? Ask another one, is your name written in the book of life? Hell is real. The same way heaven is real. There is life after death. And so don't believe anyone who tells you there is nothing like hell. I mean, I was watching that documentary and I was so shocked. That preacher was saying, for the first time in my life, I went and bought alcohol and I drank it. This is a man of God that God was using mightily. He's saying, for the first time, I went and bought. Because now, he's not afraid of hell because he thinks hell is not there. I mean, I'm a parent, but as much as I love my children, I want them to know that there are consequences that they will face if they don't obey me. You will not go to hell because God hates you. You will go to hell because you chose to go to hell. Let it sink. He loves you. That's why he provided Jesus as a way of escape. So you will not go there because he hates you. You will go there because that is the choice that you made as an individual. Because God created you with a will. You are not a robot. He created you with a will. So you can choose heaven or you can choose hell. Can we go a little bit deeper? This is it's very interesting. So Paul takes time to warn his protégés about false teachers. He writes letters to churches to warn them of false teachers. Let me just quote a few. Titus chapter 1 and verse 10 to 16. 
This is what he says. For there are many insubordinate, both idol talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. So he's mentioning deceivers and idol talkers who had infiltrated the church. And he's saying we must stop them. We must tell them to shut up because they are leading homes astray. They are leading individuals astray, teaching things that they are not supposed to because they are just doing that because they have turned the gospel into a business. Do you know there are people who will tell you what you want to hear so they can get your money? Oh, Jesus, help me preach this morning. There are prophets who will prophesy what you want to hear so that you can give them money. There are pastors who will give you instructions that will massage your ego. Because of what they want to get out of you. That's why some messages will never be preached in those churches. Because they want to make you happy. They want to make you feel nice. And so that they can be able to get your money. I'm not here for your money. I'm here because God has called me. And I'll preach the truth from the word of God. Can I hear an amen in this house? In Acts chapter 20, he speaks to the elders from Ephesus. I want you to know that Paul had spent three years in Ephesus. It is one of the cities that Paul really demonstrated the power of God. When he entered this city, he met some guys who were born again, but they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. And he started talking to them about the Holy Spirit. And he laid hands on them and they received the, Holy, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He went to the city and he started preaching and demonstrating the power of God. And the Bible says that magicians brought their books and they confessed their deeds and they got born again. And there was such a mighty revival in Ephesus. People decided to follow Jesus Christ in droves at Ephesus because they could see the demonstration of the power of God. The Bible says the word of God grew mightily in this city. But also there were challenges. Paul was being resisted a lot in this city. And that's why he spent three years in this city establishing the saints, preaching, you know, disciple, discipling the new believers that had come to Christ. And by the time he was leaving, the church was very strong at Ephesus. So he called elders. He was somewhere else and he called elders who are at Ephesus, who are taking care of churches in Ephesus. And these are the instructions that he gave them from verse 26 to verse 30. He says, therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. He said, I've preached everything in the Bible. I've preached the things that you loved and I've preached the things you didn't love. I've preached messages that made you happy and I've preached messages that pricked your conscience. I have preached until everybody stood up shouting amen and lifting their chairs. And I've preached messages where everybody is quiet like this morning <laughs> I have declared to you the whole counsel of God therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood for I know this that after my departure Savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. So he's warning them and he's telling them, listen, savage wolves will come. False teachers will arise. 
They will come because they want to sway you from the truth. They will come because they want to destroy the church. They will come because they want to destroy the believer's faith. And he's warning them against these people because they'll be speaking perverse things to draw away people from Christ so that they may follow their false doctrine. Ladies and gentlemen, we have savage wolves in the world that we are living in today. False teachers. And they are not sparing their flock. They are leading, they are leading Christians astray with their messages. They are beguiling those who are innocent and leading them astray, propagating false doctrine. And such people, I am telling you, the Bible declares that there is a curse operating in their lives. I heard somebody say, Scripture, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. We are going somewhere. After this message, you will not want any false teaching around you. You will not want any deceiver, any savage wolf around you. Because those who propagate false doctrine, they are already cast. From verse 1, Paul says, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ, and the God, and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Verse 2. And all the brethren, are you helping me read? And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins that we might deliver that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. Verse 5. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 6. I marvel. Now he's addressing them. After giving them powerful greetings. Now he goes to the crux of the matter. He says, I marvel. Can we read together? I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Tell your neighbor there is a different gospel. Not every gospel you hear is true gospel. Not every man you listen to is preaching the truth that you need to accept and believe. There is a true gospel and there is different Gospel. Hmm. Verse 7. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be. Let's read it again. Verse 8. But even if we. He says even me. The one who has taught you the truth. If I derail from the truth. He's putting himself in a very very precarious position as well. Even if we. Or who else. Or an angel. Some of you really believe angels isn't it. Not every angel is the angel of light. Or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you. Let him be a curse. Let's continue reading. Verse 9. As we have said, how comes the volume has gone down? Are we together? Okay. Tell your neighbor, increase your volume. Okay, verse 9. Let's read. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be. Hey, somebody say mercy. So you can see that Paul had already placed a curse 
Years back, Paul had already placed a curse on anyone who perverts the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is a curse hanging, I don't know where, but somewhere. And it's ready to afflict anyone that goes against the truth that is revealed in God's word. So every time you tamper with the truth, every time you adjust the truth, every time you twist the truth to suit your own selfish indulgences, I want you to know that you open up your life to curses. The word accursed comes from the Greek word anathema. Everybody say anathema. Shout it louder. Now that word means two things. Number one, it means excommunication. Anathema means excommunication. It means a person who teaches false doctrine. That person has been excommunicated out of the church. And his sentence is condemnation by Christ at the last day. So that means this person is, should be ejected from the ministry of the word, degraded from his office, and cast out of the church. Person should be told from today, you are not welcome here. It's powerful. Isn't it true? Anybody that is propagating false doctrine should be told from today, don't show up. We don't need you anymore go somewhere else. Now in this generation if you do that, somebody will say there is no love in that church. But you see when we let those people be in our midst, they destroy the church. And they even make those who are still you know, young in the faith to stumble. I remember there is a pastor who was telling me that he was preaching and he noticed another guy was sitting you know, next to some people around him. And while the pastor was preaching, he was also preaching. <laughs> so the pastor is preaching, but him is preaching to attack what the pastor is preaching. And he was polluting the people who are around him. When the pastor says something, he shoots it down. Says something, he shoots it down. So they had to deal with him. Then after that, he could stand at the gate and he distribute his CDs. Listen to this message. Don't listen to what the pastor was preaching. Listen, you know, to this message. If you want your own church, go and start yours. I mean, if you think you have revelations that are deeper than your pastor, at least for him, he has results. He has gathered people on Sunday. Why are you coming to a place where he has gathered people and preach your own gospel? If yours is true, go somewhere else and start. Let's see how many people will follow you. See, you try. You're deeper, isn't it? You're very deep. You're deep until you're drowning in the revelation. Go and start. Let's see how many people will follow you. So he was preaching while the pastor is preaching. Preaching while the pastor is preaching. They had to cast him out of the church. The word anathema also means devoted to destruction or curses. So people who preach a different gospel than the truth revealed in the Bible are doomed to evil or misery. They are victims of curses. Because, I mean, how can Jesus give his life, die for the church, reveal his will for us, and then you come and go against that will? I am telling you, God himself will fight you. I need to say that again. God himself will fight you. And I will show you. I know you're saying scriptures, they are coming. I'm going to unleash them to you today. So there is a curse on false teachers. So therefore, anathema is excommunication with curses. It is a curse solemnly pronounced by ecclesiastical authority and accompanied by excommunication. So ladies and gentlemen, we have established that there is already a curse on those who twist the truth. Paul is the one who spoke it. Many, many years 
you know, a go. And it's like it's a double curse. He repeats the curse twice, you know, in that chapter. But I also want you to know that those who associate themselves with false teachers, they are also not innocent. Those who believe false teachings, follow false teachings, succumb to false teachings, they are also not innocent. Because there is impartation by association. The Bible says, if you want to be wise, walk with the wise. The reason why Lot was blessed is because he was walking with Abraham. So it goes to, to show us that if you walk with someone that is already cursed, believe what he teaches, practice what he teaches, the curses in his life will also be transferred to you. Hey, I'm coming down your street. Because there's an, there's, an, there's an anointing that is released by association. There is an impartation that you receive by association. You understand what I'm talking about? So when you sit under such teachings, you digest them, you believe them, and you begin to practice them. Let me tell you, you also open up your life to curses. And that's why you have to be careful who you listen to. You have to be very, very careful who you listen to. In fact, right now it has become worse because we have YouTube, we have internet, we have all these avenues that you can just click and listen to any preacher. Click and listen to any preacher. Click and listen to any preacher. And you listen. You don't even know him. You don't even know where he's coming from. You don't even know what he believes in. And then you just say, I think it is different. Yeah, this is different. I've never had something like this. It's different. It's powerful. I've never had this. This man is deeper than my pastor. I've never had, I've never had my pastor preach these things. You don't even know that person. You don't even know where they're coming from. You don't even know what they believe in. That's why God insists that you should become part of a local church. Because in a local church, you are, real, you are dealing with a real man, a real pastor. You are dealing with somebody you know. You see, a lot of people who are watching me right now all over the world. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. South America, India, Qatar. Stay tuned. You'll be blessed. But most of them don't know me. But a lot of you who are here, they, you know me. You know who my wife is, isn't it? And my children. Yes, you do. I'm here with you all the time. But most of the people watching me, they don't know me. So you, you are meeting a preacher for the first time. You don't even know that preacher. He start telling you that tithing is an Old Testament thing and you believe it. One sermon changes you completely. It even changes the way you dress. <laughs> you start wearing white. Monday to Monday. Because of one sermon. One sermon erodes every teaching you have received for 10 years. Let me tell you, you are also not innocent. Because there is impartation by association. As you believe the false teachings, practice the false teachings, go against, you know, biblical doctrine, you open up your life to curses. Another scripture, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. But there were also false prophets among the people. Even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on them swift destruction. What is destruction? Curses. Swift destruction. Those are curses. All of a sudden, somebody, boom, is gone. Boom, something has happened. Swift destruction. Then verse 2. And many, please read that with me. And shout it louder. Uh huh. Uh huh. So many will also follow the destructive way. And because the teachers were destroyed, even those who follow, 
will also be destroyed. Who shout minus me in Jesus' name? By, read, by, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slam. So you can see from this verse that the teachers will be destroyed, but even those who follow those teachers will be destroyed. Why? Because there is a curse upon their lives. Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 30 to 32. Therefore, behold, let's read together. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets. Eesh. This is God speaking. Wow. I'm against the prophets, says the Lord. Who do what? Who steal my words? Everyone from his neighbor. That means you listen to what somebody is prophesying. You also steal it. And you prophesy, and you say, Last night I was, as I was sleeping, the Lord gave me this prophetic word. Yeah? Then another one listens to you, then he picks you and says, This morning, as I woke up, when I woke up, I saw an angel appear in the room, and the Lord gave me these words. Hmm. They steal, they steal. Verse, verse 31. Behold, let's read. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, that means God has said, behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. And you have these prophets in our world today, isn't it? Yeah, they prophesy lies. Lies. And you see, you believers, you have put a lot of pressure on prophets because you want them to say something. Man of God, say something. Even if he doesn't feel like saying anything, you, call, you force him to say something. Say, so what do you see, man of God? What do you see? What do you see? He says, I see you buying a car. pressure and they started and they start saying things that God has not even said their recklessness look at what the Bible says let's read that verse again from up behold I am against those who prophesy uh -huh, says the Lord and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness yet I did not send them or command them therefore they shall not profit these people at all, says the Lord. The people will not succeed. Because already there is a curse on the prophet who is trying to prophesy in your life. There is already a curse on his life because he's not a true prophet. And so as he lays his hands on you, who we? And he's prophesying. What is he releasing? Curses. Curses. And you are saying, yes, Lord. Which Lord? <laughs> I am teaching this so that you can mature. And you can grow up. And stop inviting strange people in your houses to pray for you. To pray for your children. To pray for your business. To go and anoint your bed. You are inviting trouble. Because somebody just came with a big Bible. <laughs> Ten kilograms Bible. And he knocks at your door. And he tells you, I'm a man of God, the Lord has sent me to you. Then you start trembling. <sighs> what does the Lord say? Come in, come in, come in, come in. Then he enters, he sees somebody say, before I sit down, I see graves. Now when he says, you are finished, you are slain, you are down on the floor. Man of God, help me. Man of God, help me. Help me, help me, help me. And then he begins to pray. You don't even know him. You don't even know what he's subscribed to. You don't even know where he's coming from. And as he's praying for you, he's releasing curses. If he's a false prophet. 
Then after that you start having problems in your house. Because you've, you, have, you have brought curses upon your children. You have brought curses on your mind. Some of you even invite prophets to your bedroom. Man of God prophesy. Mama, ma, you allow a strange man to touch your bed. To touch the pillow of your bed where you sleep with your husband. Or your wife. And he has oil. Say, so anoint my bed. <laughs> anoint everything. Anoint the bed. Anoint the kitchen. Anoint utensils. Anoint the sofa set. Anoint the TV. Anoint everything. By the time that guy is leaving, he has left curses. and all of a sudden you don't feel like going to church you start looking for the prophet you want more prophecies more power <laughs> more anointing <laughs> more prayers without knowing you're sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into curses God says those people will not profit it doesn't matter what their prophet, the prophet is telling them. It doesn't matter what that man of God is telling. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. I have seen it happen. One time I was ministering to another lady and she was telling me, Pastor, pray for me because another man came to my house. I said, eh, hey. yeah. He said he's a man of God, so I invited him in. He got in, he came with a container, he put water in that container, and he left the container in the house, and he said, nobody should touch that container. You come to my house. Please, help me. I, I, I need to understand. You come to my house. The house I pay rent. I pay electricity bill. Water bill service charge then you lift you you leave your thing in my house then you tell me not to touch it I, even without the spirit please wachanga ujinga look at your neighbor and tell them in english what i've just said in swahili And the man of God threatened her. He told her, if you touch it, something bad will happen to you. So she's scared. And I told her, so what else happened? He said, he requested for 10,000 shillings. Yeah. Then I asked her, so did you give? He said, hey, I was scared. She went and withdrew 10,000 shillings and gave that man. Then my next question was, do you tithe in this church? Say, mm -mm, I don't. So first of all, you already cast because you're not a tither. Number two, you've added another curse by inviting someone who is a false prophet in your house to pray. And he has left something in your I told her, go and pick it. I'm praying for you right now. Go and pick it and throw it. She said, I'm scared. And I said, go and do it. I said, I will not come and do it for you. Because when you invited him, you didn't call me. Since you started this thing, you have to finish it yourself. <laughs> I'm preaching good in this house. Go and pick it and throw it out. And come to church. You are covered. I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories upon stories. And you'll be very shocked at how gullible Christians are. Another story I was told by two ladies. And they were saying they were living together. And this man came to their house. And he says, God has sent him. Hey. They say, come. Let's hear what God has said. And the man told them so many things. From Genesis to Revelation. 
It took so long that by the time was, the guy was done, it was almost 10 going to 11 in the night. And the guy was still in the house. Hey, some men of God. They are very long services. Hey, they don't know how to summarize messages. And then he said, because he's late, he's still feeling like God is ministering to him to stick around. And then he said, in fact, God has just told me right now that I should sleep in the middle. <laughs> See, there are two ladies in the house. I say, God has instructed me. One of you should be on my left. Another should be on my right. And do you know they accepted and they agreed and they believed? <laughs> Slap your neighbor. Tell them, wachanga ujinga. <laughs> do you know the man spent in that house? In between the two ladies. What kind of a service is that? <laughs> false prophets, false teachings, and Christians are just following blindly. Please wake up. Wake up. Please wake up. Don't be that gullible. Have sensitivity. Understand the word of God. Understand what Christianity is all about. And don't just follow anybody who comes to you in the name of God. Hmm. What a preacher. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 talks about the Berean brothers. Huh? These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness. And search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So everything that they were told, they searched the scriptures to know. Tell me which scripture says you should sleep in between me and my friends. Which inspiration is that? Which anointing is that? And you see, you see if you're not careful, that guy was coming to introduce the spirit of fornication. In the lives of these ladies. I didn't ask if something happened because I didn't want the details. But I'm sure it was a very long night. I told them I have to really pray for you and rebuke that spirit. Otherwise you'll be very immoral. You're cursed. Why? Because you associate yourself with false teachers. Not everybody should just lay his hands on you. Search the scriptures. Some of you take your head everywhere. <laughs> You're losing hair not because of age, but because of the many hands. I have no beef with people who don't have hair. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying, don't take your head everywhere. Don't let everybody to pray for you. Because you see, when you're laying hands on someone, you're transferring something into that person. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Paul was even saying that don't lay your hands suddenly on no man. Don't be quick. To let people pray for me, 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 lay your hands on me, pray for me, lay your hands on me, pray for me. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go. That's why people are moving from conference to conference, from meeting to meeting, from place to place. Pray for me, pray for me, lay your hands on me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray, 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 pray. Cancel the other prayer that was made. I didn't like it. Pray, pray again. Cancel it in Jesus' name. Cancel the other prophecy that was made. I didn't like it. Cancel it. Pray, pray, pray until your head is confused. Along the way, you don't know what you're collecting. As far as your pastor, I've endeavored just to teach you the word. 
Because the word will change you. The word will transform you. The word is the sure word of prophecy. That's what the Bible says. God's word is the sure word of prophecy. When you understand the word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I, come to, I came to tell you, just come and eat the word every Sunday. Eat it. Just eat it. Every Sunday. Every Tuesday. Every Wednesday. Every Thursday. During the sick group. Just eat the word. Just eat the word. Just eat the word. Just eat the word. You don't need prophecies. You don't need anybody to know your name. You don't need anybody to know the number of your phone. You don't need anybody to say anything about your uncle. About your great, 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 grandfather. You just eat the word. 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 Die just the word and you will see that the word will transform your life. Am I preaching to somebody in this house? Yes. Slap somebody and tell them just eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. Digest the word. Assimilate the word in your system. Be like the Beren believers who search the scriptures. That's why we meet for sick groups every Thursday. We are going through the message on Sunday because we want the word of God to fill our lives. Hallelujah. We want to be saturated with the word of God so that when that funny false prophet comes to knock at your door and tells you he has visions, you tell him, listen, I already have a prophet who teaches me the word of God. I'm already blessed. I'm covered by my prophet. He's a wonderful teacher. You start ministering to the prophet. And invite the prophet to church. But you don't start shaking. He, 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 he. A man of God has come. He, he, he. No! Be like the Beren. Believe us. Can I hear an amen? amen? The Bible says they examine the scriptures. Every day. To see what Paul was saying. If it was true. They went to the scriptures, examined the scriptures, and, and, and went to listen to him again. Then they go back home and they examine the scriptures. Then they go and listen to Paul and then go back home and examine the scriptures. They go through the, the teachings that Paul gave them. And, and, and that is the kind of church I want to raise here. Not just a church that believes anything that you're taught from the pulpit. There are things you will hear, even a guest speaker say here and you will say, mm-mm. Mm -mm, that is not according to the word of God because not everybody will tell you what the Bible is saying when you become part of false doctrine you open up your life to curses let me give you the last scripture I can see you're not breathing I, I finished this message quickly isn't it we go home First Timothy chapter 6 what a message. From verse 3. If anyone, let's read together. If anyone teaches otherwise and do not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. Ha! Verse 4. He is what? Proud, knowing nothing, but he is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicion, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such tell them bye yes I have nothing to do with you because I've realized that whatever you subscribe to is not the truth can I hear an amen in this house look at your neighbor and tell them it's high time you say bye to some teachings Mm. Another singer sang a song So long, bye bye So when that false prophet comes You start singing that song So long Yeah The Bible says withdraw Withdraw Even withdraw your support 
Come on. I say even withdraw your support. Tell them from today you will not see my coin. I'm not supporting your ministry. Because I don't agree with what you're doing. Because some of these prophets we have around of God we have around are there to split churches and destroy churches. Jesus himself says I came to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. So if somebody else comes to destroy the church then he's against what Jesus subscribes to. So long bye bye you have to tell them I withdraw my support. Because you can't use members of another church to build your own ministry. Start your own. God is my witness. I have never come to your house with a kilo of sugar to tell you to join this church. Never. I have never come with unga, the way politicians do, so they can get your votes. Never. I have never gone to any church to try and get members from that church. Never. And I will never. Because I know that my people are my people. My children are my children. In fact, the Bible says my children will come from far. Far and near they will come. Wherever they are, they will locate who their shepherd is. So anybody fighting the church, I don't think is a man of God. And some of you, I came to tell you, get out of those WhatsApp groups. I wish there was a stair here. I could have come. I say, get out of those WhatsApp groups. You have no business being in those WhatsApp groups. Be in our WhatsApp group. We have our own WhatsApp groups. Hmm. No wonder you don't show up when we call you for meetings because you have divided allegiance. We can't get you. Because the prophet has called you to Cataloni. <laughs> you are praying. Even us here we are praying. We pray on Tuesdays. Oh you don't want me to preach this thing. We pray on Wednesdays as well. And you don't show up. You say it's far. Here in Catalonia. I'm preaching in this. Here in Catalonia, which place is Father? Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm not afraid of your face. Get out of that WhatsApp group. Those who are not talking to your neighbors, your suspects, turn to your neighbor, tell them, get out of those WhatsApp groups. That he sends me scriptures every morning. Read your Bible. I'm preaching in this hour. I say read your Bible every day. Withdraw. The Bible says withdraw. Tell your neighbor. Tell like five people around you. Withdraw. 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 Tell them get out. 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 I came to start up a pandemonium in this house. Get out. 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 Such people withdraw yourself. Glory to God. Withdraw yourself. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. Mm -mm, you can't. You will please one and displease the other. Where is your loyalty? Where is your allegiance? What do you subscribe to? Get out. In Jesus name. Why? Because if they are operating under a curse, you will also become a partaker of their curses. Personally, as your pastor, I am so scared of fighting another church because of that scripture. I always remember that scripture. I am so scared. 
I will never, I will never, I will never try and bring another church down. I will never try and build this church with another person's members. Never. Never. Even when we started the church, there are people who moved from our mother church to come and start with us. I send them back. I told them, go back and talk to my father. If he releases you, come. If he doesn't, stay. Let's stop there. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Remove your phone if you can. This is the altar call. Remove your phone. Bring me this banner here. Ask your neighbor, do you have pastor's podcast? This is the altar call. What is a podcast? It's an app that has all my sermons. You can have them on your phone, you can have them on your tablets, you can have them on your computers. Ask your neighbor to show you if they have that app in their phone so that we know which messages they listen to, who do they listen to. That's the altar call. You need to have this app in your phone. Shakira. Please come here quickly and explain to people how to get this app in their phone. If you're using iPhone, it's easy. If you're using these other phones, let's just say you have a journey. Come, come up here. Tell your neighbor, this is our altar call. Some directions here, you can explain. Um. Uh, you go to Play Store, then uh, you search for Podcast Addict, click on, the f on the, click on it and press download, click, uh, click open after you download, once you open on the right top corner, click on the plus sign, then click on search button and type Dazwit Achero. Don't type Pastor Dazwit. Don't type Reverend Dazwit. Type Dazwit Achero. Hey. It's the anointing. So I start. So go to the Play Store, search for Podcast Addict, click on the click and press download. Click open after downloading. Once you open the right top corner, click on the plus sign. Click on the search button and type Dazuet Achero. As I say, don't search for Pastor Dazuet or Reverend Dazuet. Uh, search for Dazuet Achero. Click on it and press subscribe. Then you'll see the episodes over there. Then you can download the episodes. Then you can be able to listen to the sermons. Yes. He doesn't know for those who have iPhones, I can help you. Amen. I think if, if you have an iPhone, just go to the App Store. If you click my name, you will see the app. It will just come out and you can be able to subscribe. All the summons. In fact, there are two. There is this for summons and there is another one for leaders. It's called Leaders Manor. You can have the two apps with you. All the summons. All the summons are free for you to listen to them. I thought you'd be excited that they are free. They are free. We are not selling summons. We stopped selling summons long time ago. Because I went somewhere for a conference and the preacher really challenged me. Because we were wondering why people are not listening to our summons. And he told us because we are selling summons to people. So I decided not to sell summons anymore. All the summons I have preached, they are in my podcast. 
You can listen to it when you're going to work. You can listen to it before you sleep. You can listen to my sermon when you're bored. You can listen to my sermon when you're happy. When there is tension in your marriage, choose one someone and just let it play. You will see that the tension will go through the window. I am telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. When that funny, funny, funny man of God comes, tell him to sit down. Then put my sermon. Say, let's listen to this man. Because I want you to be blessed. I say, I want you to be blessed. Did you get it? So ask, so can you, can you just double check with your neighbor if they have it? I know some of you have very interesting phones. The screen is not even working. No, you're not checking your phone. You're checking your book. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Lift up your hands to God and respond to that word. I want to pray for you today, but I, before I do that, I want you to respond to that word. I want to cancel any spoken word from a false prophet over your life. But before I do that, why don't you stretch your hands, put your phone where it is safe, eh? Don't trust your neighbor that much, eh? Because he has already seen what kind of phone you have, isn't it? And don't close both of your eyes, just close one, eh? Because you never know, isn't it? Everybody lift up your hands to God for a minute and respond to that word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Oh, yes. Help us, Lord. Mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, give us the desire for your word. Let's have the appetite for your word. Admire, crave, long desire for your word. Yes, yes, Lord. Your word, your word, your word. David says, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Help us today. Help us today to love your word and listen to your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that has come today. I nullify every diabolic impartation they might have received from a rogue man of God. I reverse and nullify every spoken word that they might have received from a false prophet. I nullify and reverse the effects of associating themselves with a false prophet and succumbing to false doctrine. I reverse that curse right now. I break that curse right now in the name of Jesus. I break every negative influence that has come through listening to erroneous teachings through YouTube, through the TV. I break that curse right now in the name of Jesus. I break that negative influence right now in the name of Jesus. Any teachings that have warped their minds, any teachings that have made them doubt the importance of a local church, any teachings that have interfered with their relationship with their pastors, I pray today that may the power of those teachings lose, lose your people, lose God's people right now, lose families right now, lose their children right now, lose their finances right now, lose their homes right now, in the name of Jesus. I liberate you today. I liberate your house. Father, some of us have invited false preachers and pastors in our homes. They have prayed.
they have planted things in our home states they have left things in our houses tonight lord i send the fire of the holy ghost to consume those objects right now in the name of jesus any item that has been given to your people today father i pray that they will discard them they will throw them away and nothing by any means shall hurt them i pray for their children as well some of them oh god they have allowed rogue men of god to lay hands on their children today oh god i redirect the destinies of their children in the name of jesus in the right direction in the name of jesus i proclaim that instead of curses blessings will abound instead of failure blessings will abound instead of retrogression progress will abound i bless everybody under the sound of my voice lift your hands and receive the blessings i bless your house i bless your children i bless your finances i bless the work of your hands i bless your marriage i bless your home i bless your job i bless you with perfect health i bless your mind to be a magnificent mind i bless your family in the name of jesus I declare that it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus name we pray. Clap your hands and shout a big amen in this house. Shout to the Lord with a voice. Give high 10 to 10 people and just tell them it is broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. Tell them it's broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken.